Okay, here we're going to look at some diseases of concern for tomatoes. I listed kind of the major ones to be on the lookout for here, provided with a couple pictures, and if you can't identify these pictures, you'll see them later in the presentation. Well, starting with our diseases, we want to look at initially how to control them. Well, there's the organic standards, and then there's the chemical options. For the organic standards, typically the use of copper uh, should be limited, even though it is OMRI certified, because it doesn't contain carbon and can persist in the soil but it is a good option to have on hand, in addition to Oxidate, Regalia, and Grandivo. For chemical it's not, um, options, it's not necessarily the worst of all the options if it's used with a careful IPM program, Integrated Pest Management Practices. Staple chemical products would be something like Abravo, which is a chlorothionyl, manzate, and copper in the form of Coside 3000, which is not Armory certified, um, but has shown some effectiveness. Now looking at the specific diseases well one is powdery mildew so what to look for is white fluffy spots on the leaves and when you're inspecting your plants well look for shaded areas under leaves where there's not a lot of sunlight penetration and also high humidity and moisture content how to prevent this well spacing your plants out uh, to reduce the leaf wetness and pruning can also help with this uh, throughout the season how to control, well, organically, 40% milk and 60% water can be effective, as well as Oxidate, which doesn't last very long, but is an option, and Regalia. Chemically, Rally um, 40 worked pretty good last year, and Bravo. Altenaria, or early blight, um, will look like this. It's small black specks located on the lower leaves. Lesions tend to have rings like a tree. So you kind of see here, we have these distinctive kind of rings. That's a key part for identifying that you have early blight. How to prevent this will limit soil splash onto the leaves and ensure good light penetration. Oxidate or copper for organic, bravo, manzate, or copper for chemical control options. Late blight. So this one gets a lot of attention. I get a lot of growers that think they have late blight. So pay attention to the specific images and some of the key concepts here for late blight. Lesions usually start um, on both the leaves, but can progress to fruit and stems. So typically people will see them on the leaves first but it can progress to the fruit and also the stems. Uh, typically occurs as large spots and not small pinpoints. See here, a large portion of the leaf infected. Common during heat waves and later in the season. How to really prevent this? Well, resistant varieties is a good first step. Typically, those seeds will cost more, but it's worth it if late blight does come in, in later in the year. Organically, copper uh, and oxidate can be used. Oxidate's not great. Uh, copper is pretty much the only option. Chemically, if you can use Mancozeb, that has been shown effective. Uh, some key images or classic symptoms, I should say, for late blight would be the entire leaf you see here. looks perfectly fine. There's just one large lesion here. You can see it on some other leaves, and it's also on the stems. Also looking here at the tomatoes, this is a large area here that it's infected. Uh, I provide a link down at the bottom if you want to look at and gain some more information about late blight in particular. Bacterial specks. So these are very small, dark specks that are circular these small little dots. They can be seen both on the leaves and also on the fruit. You want to avoid uh, soil splash, and because this is a bacteria, fungicides won't work very well. So applying a copper uh, would be advised. And we could see it kind of be consistent down the row. This is a farm uh, that I visited. You could see how it's very consistent in the lower leaves. And when you zoom in, you see these small little specks. This would be bacterial speck. For distilling milk, it's another one that affects the lower leaves. It looks like they're kind of burning. It's a very similar look to like a fusarium. The key part here is to rotate crops and plant resistant varieties because there's really not much you can do for verticillium once you get it in season because it is a systemic disease. Lastly here is leaf mold. Uh, it's a fuzzy kind of top and bottom to the leaves, but especially look at the underside or the lower leaf surface because you'll have these kind of lesions that appear here. If you're just looking from the top, you'll see kind of what looks like yellowing. Flip that leaf over and you'll see actual the leaf mold there. It's very common in high tunnels, uh, in fields where there's a lot of moisture, a lot of hanging fog early in the morning. You want to inspect transplants before they go out into the field if they are started in a greenhouse or high tunnel. Maybe make an application there if you see it before they go out into the field. Have good air circulation and avoid uh, feeding plants with a lot of nitrogen can help reduce this problem. Oxidate and Bravo would be two methods that you could apply to help control this disease.